Hi peeps, Bill here. I've been trying to get my head around the feminist concept of privilege. Not the definition of it. I mean, that's confusing enough even with all these uh, education threads I've got going on. Now I want to know why they choose to believe in it in the first place. Now for once the internet wasn't much help. You know, we all know it's this big patriarchal misogynist construct. So I turned to daytime television. After all, that's where the feminist agenda gets pushed the hardest and the most openly to the, to the demographic which benefits most from it. And you know what? I think I've got it. I'm going to apply a bit of Hitchens razor here. You know, that which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Instead of evidence, I'm going to pose it to women in similar circumstances to Carol Vorderman and Janet Street Porter, who are a couple of uh, lunchtime chat show hosts here in the UK. Now, I don't know either real woman personally, and I don't read enough celebrity gossip to know that much about them. But I reckon if I use them as the basis for the models in a little thought experiment, it'll help us visualise what I'm going on about a little bit better. Now, our first subject is, just like Carol, beautiful and intelligent. Men are practical creatures. They're not going to waste their time chasing after somebody who is clearly out of their league. It's normal in Western society for the male to initiate mating rituals, courtship rituals, and through no fault of her own, our girl has been taken out of the mating game almost from the start. Worse than that, she's intelligent enough to realise just how off-putting it's going to be if she comes across as too needy or too pushy to the men round about her. If she decides to choose a mate for herself, she's going to be walking on eggshells. And if she's unsuccessful, she's going to be the only member of her female circle of friends who's getting rejected, while the rest of them are all doing the rejecting. But I don't want you to feel sorry for her. Knowing that men aren't making advances to her, the blinkers have been removed. She can see and observe human interactions for what they actually are. She's going to start noticing things. She'll notice that a man's more likely to give up his seat for a woman who's pregnant with somebody else's child than he is to give up his seat for a pretty woman who could conceivably bear him a child of his own. He's going to, she's going to notice that men open doors for the elderly and for small children, not just pretty women. She'll start to understand that there is an unspoken communication going on here, just as the feminists say, but it's not, I'm male, I'm strong, mate with me. It's, I'm fit, I'm useful to the tribe. Back in the real world, Carol Vorderman actually knows this. She's brought her son up to be polite and helpful at all times, and she's quite proud of his reputation in the village where they stay as being a nice young man, and she should be. An awful lot of life's worries and concerns are going to pass you straight by if you've got good friends and neighbours to stand by your side. It is. It's nice to be nice. Our second subject is more like Miss Street Porter. Sorry, Ms. Street Porter. She's of only slightly above average intelligence and she's not conventionally good looking. Men are practical creatures. They will invest time chasing after somebody that they see as being of lesser or similar attractiveness to themselves. They'll often initiate courtship rituals with their second subject. Unfortunately, she lacks the intelligence or the empathy to appreciate the advantage that's being freely offered by the many suitors round about her. Instead, what she notices is that the number of advances made exceeds the number of occasions where she's actually receptive to those advances. She knows that the advances are going to continue to be made, even as she's rejecting advances. She perceives the, the offers to mate and partner as being unwanted, as being unneeded, and ultimately she starts to see them as a burden. And she's further burdened by cultural expectations. Here in the West, we teach and we believe in female hypergamy. That is, marrying up. 
She wants a mate to have greater looks than herself, a greater social standing and greater earning potential. And even although, to be honest, probably because she's got a huge number of potential suitors, she's not feeling that they meet expectations. It's kind of hard to feel sorry for her. Her view of male interactions is that they're irritating, childish, and these goons are constantly coming on to her. As she gets older, their approaches get more subtle and sophisticated, but they don't impress her. She feels that she doesn't need them. It irritates her that random men are offering to help her with any kind of physical struggle that she gets into. She's too blinkered to see that their offer is being made on behalf of the tribe. You know? The young man doesn't want her approval, he doesn't need her approval when he offers to change her wheel or help her out with that old wardrobe into the street. What he wants is neighbours or passers-by or even just his own good conscience to perceive him as that nice man, as that good man. She can't see that just being nice actually has real practical value in the real world. And talking of the real world, back in the real world, Ms Street Porter absolutely spits feathers at the very concept of some misogynist bastard daring to assume that she's incapable of opening a door by herself. That's actually what kicked this whole rant off. There is privilege at play here. There definitely is. Different life experiences are driving different expectations. I appreciate that. However, the sad result of spoiling a child is that you will inevitably end up with a brat. A surplus of offers of male assistance start to breed a climate where that just becomes norm. It's accepted. It's expected. In that climate, it's very easy for the efforts being made by the men around you to become invisible. By spoiling over half of our population, we're running the risk of turning that half into adult brats. Feminists love doublespeak. Uh, they get to claim words and they get to claim causes that they really don't understand. Like I said, there's privilege here, but the reality is that they're the privileged ones. And they're the ones that are wondering why men can't just eat cake. Alright, thanks for listening this far, going through the rant. And hopefully it's given you a wee smile. Um, if it hasn't, well, the comments aren't moderated and there's always a dislike button, you know. I'll speak to you soon, people. Take care.